This video I'm going to cover um, how to process your LiDAR flight in DJI Terra and bring it into Trimble Business Center. Now one of the things that they did with uh, Terra is they have the ability now to modify your static center point. So when I'm out there flying, it doesn't matter if I'm flying um, for photos or if I'm doing LiDAR. I don't fly RTK, I fly by um, doing a static file and PPK correcting. And what I, what I want to show here in Business Center, because I'm going to show how Terra and Business Center work together, is why it is important to be able to modify the center point. Um, so what I'm going to do here inside Business Center is I'm going to drag in the uh, static file, the T02 file that was created while we were out there out in the field. And what we'll see here is, here is the static file. Now this point here, okay, so let me do a little drawing here. This point right here, okay, is where the uh, rod is saying that it is, my rover head. It was actually on top of this point here. So you can see, that there is a distance difference between here and here, okay? So when I'm doing the processing inside Business Center uh, for my photogrammetry, say for the Matrice 300 or for the, uh, with the LiDAR or for the P4 um, RTK, when I'm out there and I'm doing static, what I'm able to do is do what the surveyors uh, do when we were doing different different things out in the field where we would do a bunch of side shots and then find out what the true location of that point was that we were taking the side shots from and then we would do a datum shift or a baseline correction to get it and everything would shift correctly at that point in time. So by use of this inside Business Center and being able to use typical survey skills, um, and now we're able to do some of this inside Terra. So when we bring in our LiDAR, our LiDAR is very close now to the, the actual site. So you can see here that there, there is some distances here. If I come over here and I click on... Um, the inverse over here and I say okay let's click on this point and that point you'll see here that you know we have we're four feet and we're a hundred foot difference in, in, in elevation so this is the difference probably right here of uh, a geoid um, and elliptic ellipsoid um, compared to you know uh, the the ground elevation for for that point so we're gonna need to be able to um, take care of take care of that also so we're going to be able to take care of this inside uh, Terra now. So let me just uh, clear my, my screen here and we'll minimize this. And this is why it's so important to have some basic knowledge of, of survey. So what you're doing here is you're setting up your flights correctly. You're understanding how your flight is being done. You're understanding how correct to correct it. So not every flight that you're doing is a science experiment. You want every flight that you're doing to be successful and to be a workflow. And that's kind of what I'm showing you here. So now that we, we know that we have a, a datum shift, and if I come back in here in a business center and I go properties here, we'll see here that um, I have this set up to read uh, decimal uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds which is um, what we're going to need for decimal degrees. I'm sorry, not degrees, minutes, seconds. It needs to be decimal. So you need to be decimal degrees when, when you're um, working in uh, Terra. So these are the decimal that we put in to the uh, location for um, the setup for static. And you can still see here that even though we put that in here, we still had some floating going on during the time of, of the static collection. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to modify this point um, again in, inside Terra. Now, 
before we can go to Terra, what we need to do is we need to take that T02 file and you need to convert it to a Rhinex because you need to be able to um, utilize that for the flight. And this is where everybody gets messed up on is um, how do I use the static? So what we have is that T02 file. So you see here we have the T02 file that is created from, from a Trimble. You may be running a different um, uh, rover of some sort or static base that may give you something different, but you still need to convert it to a Rhinex. So because I'm running uh, Trimble, what I'm able to do here is use the tool called Convert to Rhinex. So all I'm gonna do here is go, you know, file, open, and we'll go to that location here um, for the drone flight. And we'll come here and we'll go to August 8th. And you'll see here, here's the static file. I hit open. And what this is gonna do, this is going to, to read it. And then under tools, under options, um, I'll pick the Rhinex format I want to use and where I want that Rhinex file to go. Once I'm all set, you know, I just go ahead and, and, and convert it. Once that's converted, what I'm going to need to do is take the Rhinex file and we need to convert that Rhinex file to an OPS file. So now this file here will now be converted. Whoops. Um, will be converted to a to an OBS file, okay? So we're gonna take this file and we'll name it .obs for, for the beginning. Now what I need to do is I need to plant this OBS into, into uh, the one of the folders. And you can see here, um, I've already done that. But here's how I do it, is I come in here and I pick on one of these files and I right mouse click and I go show more options, I'm running Windows 11 and I'll say rename and then I go copy, okay? Then I come back to my OBS file that I, that I created and I go right mouse click and I go rename and then I paste the, that same header into here, the file name into here dot OBS. And then from here, I take this file and I copy it and I put it inside this file here. So now you can see that I have that OBS file, which is really my static Rhinex file, um, now in with the rest of the LiDAR as well as the photos, okay? So that's the secret of using static when it comes to using it for the DJI uh, L1, is being able to do this. So once I have that set, my next step is I'm gonna go into Terra, and when I'm in Terra, I'm gonna create a new mission. And here I'll call this um, LiDAR, we'll go caps, LiDAR to TBC video. Okay, and we'll click okay. When that is done, you'll see the name here. Now I'm gonna come over and pick the location of the file, so I'll pick this folder here and hit open. And now that's gonna load those photos, it's gonna load the uh, um, calibration, it's gonna load all the other information for, for that. Underneath the LiDAR point cloud, I'm gonna say I'm gonna process it high. I'm doing point cloud processing. And in here, because I this was flown at 200 feet, I'm gonna say I don't wanna see anything higher than say 201 feet. The system I'm going to put this out to, you can also do a projection file. Again, having a knowledge and, and knowing survey will help you out in this because you may have uh, a projection file, you may be running on a projection file, you may be running on a modified state plane of some sort that you're going to need to be able to get the output to. So here I'm not gonna teach you uh, the, the projection and how to create the projection and, and utilize this inside Terra. Um, I do have video series of how to do all that stuff. So if you're interested, um, feel free on how you can get access to uh, my uh, support site and video library. But right here is, um, we're gonna hit search and we're gonna say Arizona Central um, that we did here for, for this flight and click OK. So I have that set. The next thing I want to do here that they put in here is, a, is an offset, okay? Now this offset, what it is, it's, it's 
pretty much from what I'm seeing is the height of the rod that you used when you did the static. So in this case, it was 6.69 uh, was the height of the, of the rod that we were using at the time of static. And now once I have that set, my next thing I want to do is come in and, and here's the other thing that they changed is base uh, station center point. So I'm going to come in here and this base point center point, okay, this is of what you saw inside business center. So if I come back over to here real quick, that is this point location, okay. So there is the lat long and height of, of the static point, okay, that will match this static point. So here's a good thing for, for people to do is this site happened to be very well controlled as you saw. So I was on a known point that I was able to type that information in. But let's say you're on a site that you know you're setting up state plane and you don't know anything about it. So what you can do is you can burn static, then you can run that static and get it corrected through Opus and now you'll have a hard location of where that rover was actually on and then from there you be able to come in and make modifications to it and even tighten that flight up even more so even though I'm on a known point you can generate a known point again so having knowledge of survey will be a big help for you on your 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 drone program so in here I'm gonna come in and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the change that needs to needs to happen here so here this is gonna be um, one, four, two, five, six, zero, five for the latitude. And then the longitude will come in and make any changes that we need to make on that at zero, nine, eight, eight, one, five, three, one. And then the other thing we're going to do in here is we're going to put what the elevation should be, should be 477 point two nine four okay and then we come in and we have the set so again I'll just recheck them um, 144 25 okay so I have that set now the other cool thing is Right now, this is WGS84. You can click on here and you can say you want to put it in northing and easting of state plane, um, Arizona Central, whatever one that, that you're in. So I'm just going to uh, maximize this here really quick so we can see. Once I have it, I'll hit save. Come back in, check all this, make sure that uh, the point cloud information that I want is here, the height that I want is here, and then from here, I just hit processing. This will pop up. <clears throat> It'll give us uh, some information to double check. Once I have it, I click OK. And now what you can see right down here is it's performing the reconstruction. And usually this goes pretty quick, as you can see um, on, on a site, um, depending on you know <clears throat> how big you're, you're flying. This is, um, I believe we flew like eight acres here. So this shouldn't take uh, too long. To, to process once this is processed what will happen is we'll see the uh, the point cloud up on the screen so we'll just let this this run here okay reconstruction is complete I click OK and here is the reconstruction of, of the site so we can see here what we have again um, I made sure that I, I try to remove any noise that may be um, present because of the height that we were we flew so now that I have this set my next step is I'm going to come back over to this part of Terra where I click the home screen and you'll see here it shows me the lidar for for the video so now I'll just come in and click that so now I have a smaller um, screen and I'll click on here and I'll see the folder. So then I'll open the folder up and that's gonna bring me to the access of where the file is saved. It's usually inside your um, area where, where you keep it, 
um, underneath your login for your, your your DGI login. And under here is the LiDAR and you'll see there is the, the point cloud. So now all I have to do is take this point cloud, just drag and drop it here into Business Center. Um, our geo-referencing, there's a bunch of options you can pick in here. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as my default that I use and how I set up my drone flights. And I'm gonna click OK. And now what this is going to do, this is going to bring the point cloud into Trimble Business Center. And this is going to put it onto the, the proper um, layer group. For, for the photos, everything usually will fall under unclassified at this time. And then you can use the tools here in Business Center um, to be able to do the rest of the processing. So if I come back over to my view filter here, and you'll see here that I'll turn my scan on and then I'll turn never classified on. And what you'll see by doing that transformation, you'll see that we are now falling in the location of our GCP point. So you can see that we're, we're falling right there. You can see there's a point right there. You can see where our number two, if I tilt this here, we may be able to see this a little better that we're almost perfect in elevation. We do have some minor adjustments that we need to do and I'll, I have another video on how to do that. But you can see where this point right here and you can see the rover head and part of the pole right there. So now we are right over that spot where the static was telling us it was actually over here. So now we were able to actually do the like baseline correction or the datum shift or whatever you want, whatever you know you call it in, in your survey world. Um, again, having knowledge of survey and setting up the site correctly and what you're getting will be a big help on, on your um, use of drones and, and the LiDAR. And you can, you know, just kind of take a cursory look and you can see here that we're falling right where our GCP points are. We need to make some minor adjustments, maybe a little horizontal shift. Oh, you can see, you see here just a very tiny um, vertical uh, adjustment, but for the most part, we are now able to uh, process and get things aligned very quickly right now with the updated Terra <clears throat> and the use of, of Trimble Business Center. So hopefully you've found this video helpful on how to use a static file, <clears throat> the importance of um, static file over a known point, the importance of a datum shift or a baseline correction of that point. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.